Hi, this is Phil Hinton. Welcome back to the Bristol Show 2010. To wrap up our coverage of the Bristol show that took place over the last weekend in February, we turn to projectors and Blu-ray players. Starting with the high-definition disc format first, we ventured to the Denon room and took a look at their new all-in-one receiver and Blu-ray player package with Roger Batchelor. Uh, the centrepiece of our stand this year at Bristol 2010 is the Denon Cara system, a new departure for, for Denon really. So slightly different approach to anything that we've done before. Um, it's, in a way, it's, it's a philosophy that we've used before with products with the Smart Series, simple to use products, but this one has a little bit more flexibility than, than what we've had in the past, in as much as the, the customer with advice perhaps from the retailer can choose the loudspeakers to go with the system rather than a complete package from demo. So it's flexibility. Uh, connectivity but we're not obviously moving away from the sort of build quality and engineering quality that we have on our suit you know the separate AV components this is integrating a lot of that engineering thinking but into a very very simple to use system that you literally plug in and, oh, and away you go there are more things you can do with it of course if you want to get into multi-zone and things like that you can do but as it stands it's a very simple plug and play Moving on from Denon and NAD are launching three new Blu-ray players in 2010. The reference player is a top-of-the-line machine designed to accompany the NAD reference range of components such as the audio processor and amplifier. Rob from NAD took the time to give us the full details on the remaining two players being launched at the show. This is the first showing of the two new Blu-ray players from NAD. There's two new models, one retails at £600 and one retails at £800. The good thing with the new players uh, from NAD, as you'd expect, they're very good on playing CDs as well as playing films. The major difference between the two units, they look very similar as you can see, but the major difference between the two, the bigger one gives you the option to connect to your router and stream your media through to your receiver, so you don't need a separate unit to be able to do it. We also feature 7.1 output, which means it's backward compatible with some of the older units that you may have not um, converted through the MDC uh, concept. We're very pleased with the response that we've already had from this machine. The loading time uh, from disc insertion, we've just been um, messing around with it on one of the demonstrations, it's about 11 seconds from when you put the disc in to get in the first graphics, which is very, very quick, particularly when the disc that you're playing warns that you could be waiting for two to three minutes until you actually find something. 600 pounds will be for the T557, uh, and £800 retail for the T577. Next, it was heavy metal at reference level on Onkyo's new full THX Blu-ray system. The demos being played on this system range from the new Star Trek film to Iron Maiden's Flight 666 Blu-ray disc. Mark Cheffins talks us through the new THX products. Yeah, hi Phil. Um, yeah, we've actually now managed to put together three products as one system that we think is pretty darn good. We've got the existing 5500 processor, which is the one on top which we've been using the DEMS throughout the whole of the show. And then what we've actually now added to it is our first THX certified Blu-ray player, BD807. We've been running it non-stop and the picture and the audio coming off it has been absolutely fantastic. The comments and the smiles that I've seen as people are walking out of the room has definitely made it worthwhile. And then to finish off the system is we've got the new 5500 nine channel power amp. So it's 220 watts per channel and it's just a sheer powerhouse of very, very clean, very, very crisp Onkyo sound, which put all three boxes together actually makes quite a formidable system, which has a street price of about 4,200 for the whole lot and we've been running it with a £20,000 plus speaker system and it hasn't disappointed. Moving away from Blu-ray playback, it was time to check out two projector manufacturers displaying their wares at Bristol Sound & Vision. 
And we move on to the world of projection, and here we are in the Epsom stand. We have the TW5500, the TW3500, and we also have Paul, and Paul's going to tell us all about them. So let's start with the 3500 from Epsom. Yep. Uh, very price conscious, £1,300. Tell yep. us a little bit more about it. Um, one of our base units sort of entry level into the 1080p sector. Uh, as you say, £1,300 at retail. We've got a 36,000 to 1 contrast ratio, uh, full horizontal vertical lens shift, twin HDMIs, component RS232 control. Um, we've got a zoom of 2 to 1 uh, and a 1.3 to 2.8 to 1 throw ratio on there as well. So it gives us loads of scope to place a projector anywhere and there's great flexibility for the customer as well. And of course, moving on from, uh, there's one model below this, which is the 2900. That's correct, yeah. Uh, 2900, very similar model in internal workings. Really, it's 1,089 at retail. Uh, that has an 18,000 to 1 contrast ratio. That's the two fundamental differences, really, just between the product. And then, of course, as we move up your range, you've got the 4400. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, TW 4400, kind of new to our range. Uh, retail of 3,000 pounds. We've got 130,000 to 1. Uh, contrast ratio. Again, using the basis of what we've already got on the 1080p chassis, horizontal vertical lens shift again, uh, twin HDMIs, same throw ratio of 1.3 to 2.8 to 1 with the 2 to 1 zoom. But the big difference is the contrast ratio, so we've jumped to 130,000 to 1. Right. What it does is it takes some of the internal workings from the higher model, the TW5500. So we've got the HQV scaler in there, we've got the deep plaque technology, so that sort of is then the entry level into what I'd say is our serious home cinema. And of course, you said serious home cinema, and we're moving on to that now with the TW5500. Yep. It's your top of the line model for this year. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, a uh, new top end model uh, where we've switched over from the 5800. So we're now TW5500, £4,000 at retail. We've got a 200,000 to 1 contrast ratio. We're using the HQV video scaler. Uh, we've got the deep black technology in there as well. We're ISF certified on that product, so the calibration side of things is is endless it's, you know we really get the picture up to scratch um, again same throw ratio same zoom on there with the horizontal and vertical lens shift as well twin HDMI's full RS232 control component composite in so the flexibility sort of continues through the range. Projector technology is following the TV market and employing LED technology as its light source. Sim2 used the Bristol show weekend to launch their first LED based DLP projector in the UK. James Buckle gives us the details on the new projector and a new screen technology being shown for the first time. Well, this is the first LED projector that Sim2 uh, have released to the market. Uh, it's uh, a unique Sim2 design. Uh, it replaces the lamp, which has been a concern for many and is the holy grail for a lot of people uh, in terms of uh, a lamp that can go just as easily as a tyre and a car can go, uh, the inconvenience and the cost and so on. Uh, so we're able, once and for all, to get rid of that issue. Uh, that, along with the colour wheel, means that we've got a quieter projector uh, and one that uh, is an instant on, instant off, uh, and with a nice wide contrast as well. The development of single chip projection, as far as SIM2 is concerned, is all going to be focused from here on in around LED illumination. So yes, there will be um, products in the pipeline that sit uh, above uh, the Miko 50 and also below the Miko 50. So there will be uh, a total of four products that we will have from Sim2 based around LED uh, by um, the fourth quarter of this year. So James, we've uh, moved from the Miko 50 over to uh, the other side of your stand and an interesting screen now. We're under full ambient light here. It's like a normal living room. Yeah, we can see the image from the screen. Tell us about it. Well, this is an interesting screen from um, Screen Innovations, who we've partnered with for the show. And it's really a concept. It enables us to show um, potential customers that you can actually enjoy traditional video projection outside of the dedicated room. And that can often be a limiting factor for um, some people in the equation where they say, well, no, I don't want to be in the back cave. Uh, can we enjoy projection with the lights on? Uh, we believe that for the first time uh, with this particular screen uh, that you can. And that wraps up our Bristol show coverage for 2010. Come back and join us again soon on avforums.tv for more AV video features, news and tutorials.